especially because Ramses is such a draw to these like melee heroes who benefit from cleave. We see him like his spe his best hero is like Ursa. Sure. And yeah. Ursa with empower can actually keep up and farm and be effective in the late game. And in regards to just taking that seer away from VP, is that just would you describe that as Virtus Pro comfort territory? That's just where they fall back to if things aren't going to plan. We've seen a lot of Dark Seer and Sven from them throughout this yeah. tournament. One of the few teams to make Dark Seer really work well. And they actually picked it the first two as well, so they're not afraid to just like show what uh, they are going to do and they can actually make it work as well. Yeah, they're, they're confident in it. You know, they're not afraid of any counters coming out or they feel like they can ban effectively around it. VP is one of the teams that actually, they're not afraid to show their uh, lineup or draft in the, in the like first two. And they, they're like one of the teams that seems like they want to have a good lineup themselves more than countering their opponent. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've seen Solo first pick himself a lot of Witch Doctor and Ogre, yeah. which aren't really counter picks to any specific heroes generally, just they offer your team things. Yeah. I mean, Rasmus, is there a balance to be struck with that? You know, drafting for yourself as opposed to deliberately trying to get I think uh, specifically Virtus Pro is probably one of the most confident teams you can find. Um, I'm very surprised how, how confident they always seem to be when they're playing majors and like, tournaments in general. They always just pick Magnus Troll first two. They don't really care what you're going to do. It's more like, try and beat us, you know? You know what we're going to do. Try and beat it now. Um, so, yeah, it, it's... It's definitely something that they, yeah, they don't mind that much. For those watching, Virtus Pro recently at the Summit picked unique heroes throughout the entire tournament, every single game up until game five of the finals, yeah. which then they just picked their favorite heroes and won the tournament. It was, uh, I was there casting, what, it was. What were the favorite heroes there? Did, uh, it was like. Can you remember? Where Ursa, was it? Ursa, Ursa Thaxus, Magnus. Then, and stuff okay, like that, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, just. They, they re that was the only game that they re repeated heroes. They brought out all these old strategies, Shadow Demon Luna, uh, Magnus and Power, plus melee heroes. And still made the run to the finals. And won the tournament. Damn. We are seeing Crystal Maiden come to play. That hero's bad. It just, it really upsets me because all it does is remind me of Slacks now. She, she's just really slow. I think she's down to 270 MS. She has gotten nerfed to the point where it, it, it feels almost unplayable. However, I feel if she comes online, she can still make the lineup very fast. Like she does give the aura to all your all your heroes, and the thing is, she jungles fairly quickly still if you get the right camps. And it's okay. She can actually like just this lineup against Lich and Kunkka supports. It can actually work because like none of them are heroes that is gonna go into your jungle and just kill you. Like Lich is gonna stand on a lane and Kunkka is gonna try to gank some uh, like mid or safe lane. That's so, true. But yeah. whatever, whatever lane VP decides to put up against the Lich is really going to struggle. I don't think Crystal Maiden is going to be able to help out, out at all there. I think her best efforts are going to be in the jungle, getting a quick level 3, probably 2 points in aura, and letting Night Stalker run around and grab as many bounty runes and have mana for constant voids. Keep your eyes on those two. Now, yeah. the Lich hasn't been discussed as much. In fact, we haven't actually got to hear your opinion on this, because the International 7 has been plagued by Lich. Um, it's been kind of the hero of the, the draft, at least in the group stages. Mm -hmm. what's, what's your take on it? Something you've been playing around with as well? Yeah, I actually felt like I was one of, one of the only people that uh, appreciated Lich when he was uh, on, like when he was never picked. Or Back in the day. Uh, yeah, like a few months ago even. Um, I, the hero has definitely become stronger as the game has developed a bit throughout this tournament. Um, it's, it feels like the five position doesn't really have that much of a place as much as it used to. Sure. The pull is pretty weak. Um, it's hard to zone the off lane. There's usually a lot of pressure on, on, the, sa on the safe lane, though. Mm. I feel like it's uh, this hero has uh, a lot of potential now. He can go to any lane, like Aka mentioned the other day, and uh, you know he, he gets his own experience. He gets his own sustain. He, he can yep. armor towers. I mean, he always has an impact. Yeah. And a lot of other five heroes just don't have that, especially in the laning phase. Right. So getting that additional impact, and uh, whilst you do say that, it does seem like. It's qu kind of quite uh, polarizing when you have a Lich played correctly and incorrectly. Would, could you shed a little insight, Peter, as to what like Lich's kind of checklist is going to be? I mean, you've, you yourself have said that you know stats don't tell you everything. Bad teams can pick the same hero. Lich, I mean, we've seen Cloud9. They, they tried to draft it. They were one of the few to chase the, uh, the Chinese with it and could not make it work. What, what does a bad Lich look like in comparison to a good? A bad Lich or a good Lich? 
a is good that a lich? tough question? It's it is a, it's definitely a tough question. Just using the abilities in might, the right way. Might be more based off the the team and how they built around the, the opponents. Lich. I would say because the ice army is what's going to make him good in the sure. late game. So We've if they're up against a lot of physical damage, now they actually pick Sven against it. So now lich is actually quite good for them. Yeah, we've seen a couple of uh, bad lich games where the lich moves around a lot and isn't, or he lanes, or he chooses the wrong lane to mm -hmm. be in. It's you know you want to set him up against somebody to slow them down. You know if you're worried about. He, he's he's also an enabler in a sense, right? What do you put with the lich? Uh, that there are certain heroes that can be very effective. You put a centaur with a lich and give him armor. You know he's pretty much untouchable there. You can pick, yeah, you can pick a weaker so laner. We've seen you can morphlings exactly paired up with that lich. Doom has been picked with Lich as well a lot. Is also my VP is spanning it as well in the second phase there. Wow. You've got VP Sven. We've talked about that beforehand, and Beastmaster is going to be coming in from LG. That could work as well, I guess. Yeah. Like if he gets a, a couple of levels to level up the boars, then he can be very annoying. That is very strong for sure. Um, this is a not hero that nobody really plays except for LGD, right? Not often picked into Night Stalker, but if you build a Vlad's first and you become this like five-man pushing hero, you can almost counter what Night Stalker does for your team. I actually remember how like OG back in the day doing like in Frankfurt Major and stuff like that. They actually felt that uh, Beastmaster was kind of the counter to Night Stalker because he did give you some kind of vision, right? And you had the boars to push out the lane. You got your book. You can like rat a bit. Night Stalker doesn't like that with someone. There's a like Sven and a CM though to help deal with that necro book. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and you can force towers with him as well with his passive aura. It makes the tower pushes. It's 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 not a it's it's a pretty vague matchup I think. So you guys are a fan of the pick? I, I think, think it could work, but it's not something that I would pick for let's my team. See what they have planned here, because I think the hero is very versatile overall, and Ooh, I think it's underappreciated at that, the moment. That's looking like a Pasha Omni Knight in the off lane. Yeah. Could be an aggro trident perhaps to counter out the Lich idea. Maybe, and then they put the Omni Knight against the Beastmaster or something like that. Yeah, that'd be a tough lane for him, but Omni Knight, you know, with a little bit of sustain from the heal, could potentially manage the harassment from Lich's Frost Nova in the yeah, lane phase. I think, yeah, I think they probably don't mind that much uh, putting Omni Knight against just Lich Beastmaster. Um, he's going to be fine there. Mm. He's going to farm at least, though. So. But now there's a troll, which is pretty decent in lane overall, so the Echo Trident might not be the best idea. They are gearing up to group up and push against this Night Stalker, I think. That, mm -hmm. I think that's something that Virtus Pro is lacking a bit, is the team fight. Crystal Maiden offers a little bit. Night Stalker next to none. Sven, he has a hard time getting into fights until he gets a Blink Dagger and a BKB. Um, but even when he does get that BKB, he's still going to be dealing with that roar from Beastmaster. I'm sure that's something Virtus Pro would have been aware of. By drafting it first, they knew that that would give the freedom to LGD to, to build towards that. They knew that that was coming. They knew that Omni Knight was coming? Well, no, they knew that LGD would try and build a, to counter that Night Stalk. You've, you've been True. Ten seconds. Yeah, so Virtus Pro trying to get some more team fights so they can actually defend their towers with an Omni Knight. Up. We've got Casey and Slacks now. They need some kind <laughs> of uh, powerful mid hero here, right? They need. Nice. Yeah. Casey and Slacks on Virtus Pro here. Yeah, they're representing. I think Casey pulled off the facial hair better, yeah, right? Slacks is looking a little slim. <laughs> he lost it all the way, didn't he? <laughs> He's looking good. He's looking fine. Who could who could cosplay as Sven? That's the real question. Oh. Talent team. I think I think Peter, you could rock a Sven. Yeah. Yeah. I maybe, think I'm, maybe it's more like a fly kind of. Yeah, that's more. Fly. Oh yeah, you're right. Let's I get fly, fly kind of thing. I'm a little yeah. skinny, I think. Yeah, we'll get you down the gym. Give Blitz six months. He'll be there as well. Jeez. Night Stalker's ripped. It's true. Yeah. Him and his blue buddy Sven. Jim. Oh, Jim. There is, a, there is a recurring blue theme, and we have. As with all the drafts that are manned by me, gone on to a topic of aesthetics. Good job, Alex. Solid work. Yeah, Waiting for LGD's draft. You're definitely derail on the panel. That's my job, yeah. That's what they were like. Day 9's keeping it on topic too much. Jump in and make, talk some nonsense. You want to talk StarCraft? <laughs> sure, man. Medusa Ooh. banned from Virtus Pro. I like that. It's a, Medusa's one of the hard counters to Sven because you can cast Stone Gaze uh, even during his BKB when he's looking to connect the majority of his damage. Mm. He's got to turn and run away instead of fighting. Necrophos, the last pick. It fits well with the other heroes, as we said before, that they really want to push and pressure towers, so now they actually have some sustain and heal. What do you think VP's looking at? Yeah, this is the big question. The, the DP would be good for them, I think, but it's banned out. Um, Queen of Pins banned as well. Puck? I think Puck is a little bit on the weak side. 
for their lineup. But you want more firepower? Yes. Yeah, I definitely want something stronger. I could see. Hmm. Is the Invoker? Is, Invoker is not banned. No, Invoker could be interesting. They have There's some no one here, so. up, setups. Yeah. Uh, I could see maybe Storm Spirit being good, but it might be a little bit. Od. Like Storm. Yeah, they had Storm they have like right. Beast Alti, and they have Storm, Kunka Storm. X as well. I don't. I don't know. I think Storm looks good, but the problem is if it if it comes a bit too slow. But they do have Repel. They have like Omni Night Heal. They have CM somebody. Aura. CM Aura. I think it's night really Night Time yeah, Storm would be good. Lena. Lena. All right. I mean, that's a classic with Lena. She CM hasn't been too, picked right? so much lately. Yeah. Compared to before, she was very popular during the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said they needed firepower, and they get quite literal firepower from Lena. Mm. Omni Knight, Sven, Crystal Maiden, and Night Stalker coming in from VP. Now, the question is, and it has to be asked, AK, okay, throwing this one towards you in terms of, is there a draft that you significantly like more than the other? I think LED has a more clear plan of what they want to do, and uh, Virtus Pro kind of ended up in a way in there where like, they had to try to counter LED's lineup instead. They're going to be reacting a lot in this game, right. and those team fights are going to determine who comes out on top. Yeah. Perfect. It's been an absolute pleasure, guys. We're going to go ahead and continue to top up our tan as we go ahead and jump into another fantastic game here at TI7. Your casters are waiting in the wings. Ten seconds remaining. Greetings and salutations, Dota fans. Welcome to what promises to be a real barn burner of a showdown. Lumi, we've got LGD taking on VP. VP, the last Western hope remaining in the upper bracket. They've got a very fearsome opponent here. Do you have to pay copyright to use that line? No, that's just my homage to AC. I miss okay. a man, I miss his hype, you know, it's, it's the best I can do. Well, I gotta tell you, I think out of all of teams coming out from China, I personally think that LGD is the strongest one. Uh, really? Yes. You know, wow. six, eight months ago when I was casting LGD on these online games, they were just kind of muscling people down just off the raw skill of Ame and maybe, or Somnus as he's tacked up in this game. but. In the last two to three months, I felt like they, they have a complete package. Yao has been literally outdrafting their opponent pretty much every single time that I've casted their game. So they have made the final evolution. You got the raw skills, you got the draft, and now they are ready to take down a TI, I think. Yeah, and looking at this LGD team, you know, like the old storyline for Yao, you go back to TI3, LGD got bounced by Liquid. That was a huge upset at the time. Uh, and then. Xiao Wei left. Xiao Wei moved on to newbie. He won a TI without any of his old teammates. And so the question became, like, were they holding him back? What, did Xiao Wei just need to get away from not just Yao, but everyone else on that team, Silar, who was with him at the time? Uh, now it seems like maybe we've come full circle, and Yao has finally fully stepped in to that role as a captain, as a drafter, as a leader, and has taken LGD very far. But that said, they've got a fearsome opponent uh -oh. here, and VP want to get this party started. And guess who they find? The Jinx is in, and Yao down for the count. Giving up first blood to no one. That is not a good sign here for your mid player. Every time you see your support give up first blood, you're in the mid, you're like, dang it. <laughs> Why'd you gotta be there? But oh. that will give Somnus, or I guess for the remainder of cast, I will refer him as maybe he's better known for that tag. Or do you think we should? No, we can call him. Maybe. All right. Thank you for giving me the permission, LB. I appreciate that. <laughs> I asked his agent. He said All it was right. okay. Cool. Yeah, that, that does secure him the rune, but still, big heavy win here for Virtus Pro. Yeah, early first blood for them, and now, I think while we wait for these lanes to unfold, I, you know, we look at VP's lineup, so much of this game is going to be dictated by Lil on the Night Stalker and uh, enabled by Solo on the Crystal Maid. I know the panel mentioned, you know, PPD said it's not a good hero right now. Do you think it can be a, a good hero this game, or is it going to be a liability, you know, all game long against what LGD bring to bear? Are you talking about the Omni Knight? Uh, the Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden. I think she will be fine. She's going to be mostly staying in the lane. One of the, her strongest or weakest point is that she's so slow, and this patch is really about contesting the bounty runes. But she's going to let the uh, Night Stalker to do most of the bounty picking. So. so she's here, you think, mainly for the aura to yes. give a little bit of extra experience. Her, her allies, all four of them, takes advantage of the allies extremely well, especially with Lina on the mid lane spamming away, as well as Omni Knight definitely needs a mana to keep himself gassed up on the top lane. Often when we see the Omni, it is with some super carry that really takes advantage of the Repel. Like, they, in theory, they do have that with the maybe the Sven, maybe the Lina. However, there is some lockdown to go through that, whether it's the Night Stalker ultimate, uh, the Necrophos, Reaper Sight stun, uh, or potentially, you know, just looking at some troll bashes. So bottom it's not, lane? not automatic, but that will be a good lockdown. But Eleven does get caught out here in the bottom lane. 
Good pick to start things off for VP. They get two to nothing early. They're also pulling during this time. So this bottom lane seems clearly won, at least for now. Yao staying there for the moment. Curious to see if he makes a rotation as he's being bullied a bit in the river. The boar's gonna lend him a bit of an assist as Lil makes his journey towards the middle lane, running away from that boar now, wrapping back in. So they're leaving the Lich bottom. And I, I wanna ask you, do you do you like the Lich staying here? Do you think he could be more effective or useful elsewhere? Well, not if he's giving up kills like that, right? I, I think the idea here is what exactly LG or IG did yesterday. Remember, they ran the Sanking Lich in the off lane. They want to control this lane and just solely win, but instead they're just giving kills after kills after kills. Crystal like Maiden, no more mana here on VP, so they won't be able to get follow up. But it's two, it's now two deaths in the lane. It's a third kill on this bottom half of the map, and you really have to wonder: Are they going to make an adjustment? Yao TP's in again. He's going to deny that range creep, so content to at least try and slow this down, but... I think LGD is just getting a little bit too ahead of themselves. Lich as a laner gets really, really strong at level 2 and 3. Not as strong at level 1. It felt like they give away a little bit too much when they're, they don't have any ability to fight. You take Sacrificer 1, you're a glorified range creep. Just stay back. And unfortunately, they got punished pretty hard. That does mean Eleven is on his own, though, and they're moving in again, looking to punish the Lich. Yeah, and this is where Lich gets stronger in the lane, right? You put the Frost armor on O11, and he's got seven armor with the, of course, uh, the attack slow apply to them when you do uh, attack him. So he should be absolutely fine. And so this lane is not winning for LGD, but eventually it will win. So how about the other lanes? In the mid lane, no one. Duke it out with maybe here. Uh, for a while, maybe widely considered to be by far the best mid in China. Nowadays, I think some would say SCCC can challenge him for that crown, but certainly one of the premier mids and doing well early on against no one a slight edge of cs He's getting a little help from victoria they are moving in while simultaneously in the bottom lane the frost armor saving the day can they get this no one kill the lena's low about to fall crucial that lgd gets this not dead yet oh. and no one makes it out uh. <laughs> wow i think maybe use his ghost trial a little bit too early i think he could have gotten an extra attack or two not taking into account of the ghosts uh, the fairy fire that the Lina activated, so slight mistake there by maybe, but so having the lane advantage, great gang from the Kunga, giving their mid a little bit of advantage there. On the last lane that we haven't really looked at is Pasha on this offlane Omni Knight, who for now is getting his experience already level four. They haven't been able to force him out of the lane, although they are going to try with the turret now. He's relatively low, has the level two heal, still the pursuit. They're going to be looking for some timely bashes. He gets pulled back by an X, but the creep wave comes in, and Pasha will be absolutely fine. So the early landing stage definitely belongs to VP. And now, Wolf Howl's nighttime kicks in, and Lil starts to get aggressive. All those kills, Lumi, they're coming in daytime, but now VP can ramp up the aggression. One of the downside of this defensive trial lane for Virtus Pro is that they're not getting that much level. You have three kills in the lane, and your Night Stalker is still level two. And that's just kind of a byproduct of Crystal Midden nowadays. She used to be a very efficient and juggler. Lich. And Lich, yeah. For, of course, more so than the Lich and the, the CM. But now it looks like the Night Stalker will be roaming to the mid lane to perhaps set up a kill. And maybe is relatively low. Yeah, it does go Shroud up. Has a few stick charges available as well. So VP aren't going to be able to commit for that kill. You, in fact, see four LGD heroes in the vicinity just ready for a potential dive while also trying to farm the woods. And one thing about this Night Stalker pick is the presence of the Beastmaster. I think very important to talk about. It yep. might not be the easiest Night Stalker game. There's always vision if the Beastmaster position's right. So VP can't just count and bank on being able to dive towers with impunity. There could well be a punish and anticipation from the LGD side. I do want to point out this ward that uh, Virtus Pearl lay out in the very beginning of the game, overseeing the Ancients. That's something that Lich offlanes would like to do, especially with the Beastmaster in the game. And of course, when you have a Sven, if you do know that there is going to be a stack, you can easily steal it after a good fight. So I think that's definitely that something that Virtus Pearl will be looking towards to do. Eleven. Feeding his hawk into the waiting arms of Solo, who is now just dual laning as the Night Stalker continues his journey around the world, heading towards the top lane. Didn't really see an opening there. In fact, the Lich also making the rotation. I think he was hiding in fog, just waiting for that potential Night Stalker dive. And they're going to go again on the bottom lane. Eleven could be in trouble here with the Frostbite coming out. He doesn't have the plus armor. The attack speed slow not there, and down he will go. Brutal start indeed. VP up four kills. Great start for them. They're not really that far ahead, all things considered, Lumi. Uh, LGD still farming well and otherwise keeping the game relatively close. But I guess the question is, how do LGD get back in this game? What is their strategy moving forward? 
LGD needs a lot of levels on the heroes before they do a lot. I mean, maybe is level six, so he could start rotating around and set up some kills, but not before he gets ganked here. Speaking Three man rotation. Maybe. Not where he wants to be. Laguna comes out, stick up, pop, but it was after the okay. drop. He could be in danger. Then the torrent comes through. The ult from the Necro, they get the kill. CM down. At least a small trade, but the Lil looking for more. Wants some revenge. It's a double for no one. It could be oh a my triple. God. Lil wanting to chase, but no one. Doesn't want to commit with those quick respawns coming through. Much bigger victory here. VP grabbing cores, only giving up supports, continuing to extend their lead. Six to one now. Remember when the when the question was proposed at the panel, what is a bad Lich game? You're watching it right now. Lich is supposed to give you the lane advantage. You're not supposed to fall six to one in, uh, behind. You're not supposed to be losing out on so much gold. He was picked for this off lane, they didn't win off the lane. And now he's kind of rotating around, and that's not the reason why you pick Lich. Moving forward in the mid game, he's really going to be lost in terms of what he can do. Smoke gang, going up top. Yeah, you pick the Lich, you'd love to have passive lanes, but Ame getting trapped out. The troll eats the heal bomb. Mauled down. Virtus Pro continue to gain steam here. Revving up the plow. They are in full control now, but soon this nighttime will end. And we'll see if LGD can start to get some momentum back their way. Ramsey's left alone bottom. There is soon going to be a Primal Roar available. LGD might be able to make a move to actually baiting this one. Eleven doesn't have his level six yet, though. He's just going to give up a free kill. Or maybe not. Victoria, big save from him. The Torrent comes through, and now the slow. Just looking to retreat, though, as Lil's on the chase. Doesn't have the mana. He gets baited in. Now from the side comes maybe with the flank. The ult's cooling Woo! down one second. He won't get the bonus death time on the Night Stalker, but they do salvage the fight. And now Beastmaster level six, LGD, even bringing the troll in for that engagement, they might be looking to push off. They're gonna this. steal this big stack. Ame, I believe that was a three to four big stack here, and they just cleaned it up. That was supposed to be a Sven, so that engagement, not only did Ramses not get the kill that he intended to go for, it also lost pretty big economically to LGD. I think that was uh, a pretty good comeback here. And look at the transition from LGD. They get the kill, and they're just going to group up the Beastmaster and the Troll together and force the fight. Other oh, diving onto Solo, but reinforcements are arriving. Pasha wants to take this. He's got the heal. That's going to bring the Troll low. Now Ami needs to back away. Where's the follow-up? Still that Primal Roar available, but nobody on VP low enough to continue this aggression. So a good job of, by Pasha of blunting the onslaught. And now VP going to settle down a little bit. LGD forced to back away. This is the time where their lineup starts to ramp up in the push department, Lumi, but don't have a point in that troll ult just yet. No battle trance, so perhaps not quite ready to go for it. No, I think they definitely need a little bit more levels before they could actually group up for a concentrated push. I'm also worried moving forward in this mid game, I feel like Nine Posh's Omni Knight is just going to be way too big. He got too much in that laning stage. Maybe walking into a gank squad, but looks like he's going to be okay. It's three heroes from LGD looking to dive. Still no ultimate on the Lich. We have often seen the chain cross come out. Two heroes done by Ramsey's good connection to start. Now the heal to follow. Chasing the back, the leader comes through, clutches the kill. And all 11 in danger. Continues his retreat, but the onslaught is there. DP storming forward. The okay. roar has to be committed just wow. to get back safely. And still the stun's gonna take him. Solo isn't even needed for this kill. No one scores another Virtus Pro R on. Higher early. Meanwhile, Night Stalker successfully TPs out from a gank up top. Yeah, they are winning pretty much every single lane, every single in engagement. And LGD is a lineup that I think needs to get a little bit more done in the laning stage. I, I don't think you could just be like, okay, we're, we're going to scale better in late game. LGD does not have that kind of la lineup against Alina and his fan. I, it is, you know, to emphasize the point you were making before the action broke out earlier, like you pick Lich, you'd love to have a very passive laning stage. Just yep. sit back win through the War of Attrition, through constant sacrifices, but they fought a lot early, and those were not favorable engagements. It was before the Lich got his level advantage, before the sacrifices kicked in, and then VP have been able to snowball it since. So I suppose a small silver lining for LGD is that VP has not been able to stack much. Still no ancient stacks on oh. either camp as of yet. LGD smoked next to the shrine, spotted out by a well-placed Observer Ward by really, Virtus Pro. Really in the pressure to make something happen with this Necrophos. Did go for that early veil. Obviously, top armor top. will be essential against the Sven. Yeah, LGD just gives up the gank. They, they kind of know that maybe they got spotted. Even a Radiant scan coming in. It's not actually going to detect Victoria, but this might free up the push bottom anyway with Eleven's army of boars stacking up. Perhaps LGD will commit. Sneaking in from the side, Victoria gets down a key deep ward. 
So far, so good for VP, though. They have mostly thwarted these ganks now, letting the darkness fall and closing in on natural nighttime. They look to defend this tier one. Still no towers claimed. LGD, their lineup was predicated on taking at least one tower by now. Or at least doing a, a ton of damage, too, right. which uh, they have on the bottom side. But I, I think LGD definitely not happy with how their early game going. I think. Critically speaking, look at Victoria's level. He's level five. He's trying to smoke around with his team and set up kills, but without the, the ghost ship, they I don't think they have enough damage to really kind of put people low enough for that Reaper. So I, maybe has really even given up give, ganking with the team. He's, he says, look, I need to get level 12. I'm going to just farm up and, and you guys worry about yourself. The thing is, they're so reliant on the Reaper site to complete kills and you've got an Omni Knight to yeah. worry about with a level three repel. So the uptime is quite high and very likely and while you might get the stun, you're unlikely to be able to dish out the damage needed for the kill. Yeah, LD, I gave you that little look when they picked Necrofalls into the Omni Knight. Generally, Omni Knight is seen as one of the better heroes to, to pick against the Necro. Unless you crush the lanes really yeah, hard. Which they didn't. So, you know, LGD is in, in a lot of trouble. Mid lane looks like the rotation is coming in. Are they going to make that dive? Or maybe. Maybe trying to tank up now as he works his way back towards a hood. Still Lil, eyeing his prey, but it's a rather reinforced hide I'll have to chew through if he wants to get that kill. But while this is all going on, Pasha is getting some precious me time top. He takes the tower down uncontested. At this rate, we might just see like a straight, you know, Midas or, Radi Midas or Radiance coming out from Pasha. He's yeah. just getting all the farm in the world. And there's no stopping him, at least not right now. Like the only person that could really kill him is a dual gank of the Beastmaster Roar as well as the... Uh, Reaper Sight. Oh, yeah. But easy GPF talent. <laughs> Why not with the start he's had? So, what do you think he's going to go for? He's got the Midas queued up. Yeah, he's going for a. I, I definitely think you go Midas when you're already this highly level. Like, you don't. You, so, you what about the next item, though? Like, okay, Griefs. Good choice. They do know LGD's 5 man is really strong in mid game, right? Once you get the, the key items, like I imagine Necro's going to try to complete a pipe. Do you see maybe queuing that up now? Beastmaster. We'll see. Uh, for now, appears to be a solar crest. But they're likely to go for that five-man push. They're likely to try to take Roche. So you do want at least something item-wise from the Omni that lets you take fights. And I mean, Mech certainly fits the bill there. Actually, looks like he wants to change out for a four staff. But. OK. But yeah, just something to help the team. Like, you can go back for something greedier later. But. Sure. Four staff seen as one of the best counter to Beast Master Roar. You, you know, you spend a long cooldown ultimate for a single target hero. Boom, push him away, and you're fine. Can LGD finally make a smoke work for them? It's tough to do it at night, but they are going to try. No one showing himself mid for now. Did opt for the Yule Scepter on the Lina. LGD move in. Arcane Rune here, maybe. Going to snag it. VP immediately looking to back away. And Victoria unable to get the initiation. So again, VP correctly anticipating these LGD movements. That's the third failed smoke for them. They have just had LGD's number all game long. That was a very curious time to very curious time to make that smoke. Hold on, I thought Old Levin's gonna get initiated. It's getting completely blown up. Five VP heroes on the chase. Little flying forward, giving vision. Yeah. Pushing up the daisies now as VP start to take this tower down. Tier one under siege. No frost armor on it even. Like that Lich is afraid to even get near the tower for the time being. So, in fact, the one hero who sticks around could be punished on the neck. Post caught out. Good stuff coming through from the centaur. Lil with the micro skills, and now the chain frost committed, but the Omni's there to keep them alive. Chain um, frost. CP's in. Still the oh, what are we the Keeps up bouncing. Still no kills. They need more damage. They want Pasha. They will get him. Can they find more on the retreat? Solo. Dangerously low. The hero plays for me out. Try and keep his team in this game, but Centaur Stomp is available. <laughs> Two out of times here. in a row. Lil with the huge plays going for that early Helm of the Dominator build on the Night Stalker. That was a very poor timing to do the LGD smoke gank, in my opinion, because they did it during nighttime. Like, Night Stalker sees you before you're, and they you see it, them. And they did a blind. Like, sometimes we'll see teams smoke at night, but they at least have a ward, uh, or they have some sort of vision advantage to set right. up for an easy kill. They had one deep into the jungle, uh, into the Radiant jungle, but I don't think that one saw any hero at that time. But finally, LGD with a slight momentary lead after that fight will take at least a tier one tower. VP probably not in position to trade just yet as Ame cracks open the Mask of Madness. Raw attack speed so far for him. Grab the Yasha as well. It's the least important tower for their strategy though, as they really are a lot about the Roshan, but the troll, the Beastmaster, 
uh, heroes that can use the Aegis quite well, potentially, like the Necrophos, uh, who offers a lot on a second life. Ramses, by the way, finishing a four stack Ancients, being stacked up by that uh, low Centaur. Nice lockers. Already grabbed the Oblivion Snap, I believe Echo Saber. But either way, uh, LGD is working on this tower now, quickly chewing it down. DP don't want to contest just yet. They are waiting for their next round of items. They want to take a fight where LGD aren't already set up at a tower, so they're going to retreat for the time being. This last uh, minute and a half for LGD has been really good. They desperately need that gold going to some of these key heroes. 11 finishing that solar crest allows them to tank quite a bit. I wonder if he's going to go for a blink BKB or blink build this oh, game. No one could be in danger here. The Yule's Roar. there though. Oh, the Yules. Quick Yules, but the chain cross locked in from distance. Roar comes through. Even the Reaper. Gotta love the commitment from Yao there, and they do score the long duration. Look at his respawn time, 66 seconds. Yeah, that's big, and that is the thing about this LGD draft, is even from a deficit, they're just so strong in the mid game. But here oh. comes Lil again, hunting Victoria. Oh, Victoria down once more. Lil continues to make plays around the map. 3-1-6 and six on the Night Stalker. Doing it solo now. So I do want to ask your opinion about the Night Stalker Helm of the Dominator build. Not something that we see too often, but the Centaur has been pretty effective so far. Quite instrumental. We'll talk about it in a moment, but for now, LGD getting run over in the mid lane. A rain of fights <laughs> coming down as Solo continues to dish out the damage. Even through the Ghost Shroud, they'll slay Ame and maybe both Fours down for the count. They didn't have the Beastmaster there. Of course, the Kunkka had only just respawned, and they didn't have the boat available. Costly mistake from LGD, underestimating VP's willingness to take the fight. Yeah, there's no way that Troll Warlord could be in that kind of forward position without having a BKB. Look at how awkward it was as he got kind of pushed into the right side. If he had BKB there, maybe he could sit his ground and fight, but... They just got melted. Yeah, he queues it up now. He's <laughs> definitely going to need it as this game moves yeah. along. But. He needs both BKP and Diffusal Blade to actually counteract against Guardian Angel. That will be a big threat against them as well. So just a ton of items that LGD need. Unfortunately, they are just too poor. Yeah, they need a ton of items as the game moves along. And, you know, even if you get that BKB, Lina is a very hard hitter with right clicks, assuming sure. yeah. she goes for the damage talent. You have Warcry to back you up. You have to spend right clicks, so... Other thing I think to keep in mind is they have multiple targets that you really want to roar. Like, those are the two big ones. Maybe you could even make an argument for the Omni Knight so he can't save his teammates. But LGD, they're not frazzled by this bad turn of events. They're still going to try to go for the roach. They've lost one already. Victoria down. Now Ame's in the pit, but he rushes out, wants to take the fight. Yeah, wants the chain frost. He won't get it off, though. VP swarming to the point of attack. It's a Zerg rush from them. Locking down Ame, picking him off. Ages instantly will be burnt and likely dies again. Stormbolt's pulled down, goes for the Whirling Axes, but surrounded and pounded. BP make it three, plus an Aegis down. They are fearless here on the big stage. Yeah, they gave, gave away the Roshan, but you know they just took it right back very quickly and now invading into the enemy jungle. Do we have a second to talk about that Helm of the Dominator? Because Little has been microing out of his mind. Known as one of the best Visage players in the world. I guess uh, this is Vicious Light as he's sending in the Centaur, stomping people and extending chain stuns, as well as allowing the uh, Omni Knight to actually have a good killable target in the front line to do that big bomb damage. It can also soak up, you know, a chain frost bounce and sure. potentially just drag it away from your team. So that Centaur also has stacked four ancient camps for his uh, spin. So yeah, so you can basically do what you want to do at nighttime as a Night Stalker, and that's probably the biggest reason: stay active, constantly pressure. Uh, while also still ensuring your economy is robust. So I think that's the most important aspect of it. And then the bonus is whatever it brings to you in an actual fight. Sure. His hand attack speed uh, also actually is quite nice for Night nice Stalker. It does get in quite a bit of right click, especially when he is in a 1v1 situation or a support in jungle or something like that. Still, still prowling about here as LGD. I to feel quite scared. It's a lineup that's meant to group up, take towers early, grab an Aegis, and use that to force objectives. But Lumi, they've gotten only two towers, and for their purposes, the least important two, these two bottom tier ones. It's not stopped VP from farming at all. VP's farming the northern half of the map without fear. LGD, if anything, the lineup that wants to be map controlling and playing from ahead is currently playing from a sizable disadvantage. 17 to 4, down 9k gold. How do they get back in this game? 
Well, Reaper Scythe is a hell of a spell. You know, when the game goes longer, the, the respawn timer kind of adds more and more in terms of how effective it is. But I, I think they're getting closer and closer to a point where VP needs to go up the hill, dive a little bit too deep, and make a big mistake. For now, looks like the two teams will trade a tower. LGD does get the mid-tier one, but here comes VP. the backstab. They want to fight. They're bringing in five. The tower's low, but in goes Ramsey's head full of steam. Gets up the stun. Ame on the run, and from the rear comes Solo with the zoning! Ultimate beat the Frost as he breaks down three with the help of his team. Now onto Somnus. And maybe no calls to be accepted by this Necrophos. He will drop as well the lone survivor to tell the tale of sadness of the plow. We're going to watch that one more time. You see in the front line, Sven just goes in. And on the back line, great rotation coming in. And they just cut off everybody. Crystal hit an ultimate. And like you said, it was a zoning one. And there was nowhere to go for LGD. They don't get a single player, and this, now tier three is being seized on. This is what we all knew VP was capable of. This was the reason why we saw swagger and confidence from Virtus Pro at past events. Some have knocked them for being overly confident, even cocky at times. As mentioned at the summit, going for the, you know, pick a different hero every game, never play a hero twice. Hey, they want that strategy. tournament. And they ended up winning the tournament, and perhaps it made them a bit stronger. Now they come into TI and on the big stage, on the verge of finally taking a game off of one of these top Chinese dogs as LGD find themselves on the ropes. Yeah, so far I think LGD has not really shown up and played Dota just yet. They had resemblance of showing up and play Dota, they made some good moves, but ultimately I think that they didn't execute the, the Dota that they want to play. The draft to me is not the draft that they intended to, to show right now. Yeah, I mean, biggest thing, is it just that they didn't get enough mileage out of the Lich for you? Yeah. Not just as Lich, but a laning stage as a whole, right? Like, Lich is a big part of it, obviously, but I think Beastmaster is supposed to do more in this stage of the game. Maybe supposed to be getting a, a Reaper side kill left and right. How many Reaper side kill have we seen? One, two? I think just the one. I mean, they have four maybe kills, two. so we could, you know, count it up really quickly. So. It's not more than four. Yeah. So, and of course, I've not had, uh, felt the presence of this Troll Warlord. I mean, he, he's hit a tower a couple of times, he's gotten the Roche, but... He's just not a big threat. He's gone for the Blink Dagger, which... He still doesn't have the BKB, and the thing is, right. you mentioned he's not a big threat. Like, he has to get a BKB. They have so many ways to deal with him otherwise. The Blind from the Night Stalker with Crippling Fear. Tons of slow chain stun galore with the Spen, the Lina. Not to mention, just the Omni Knight constantly nuking you down with the Purification. Like, he's not tanky enough to get away without a BKB, even if it's not a game-winning item. Without a BKB, I don't think you kill anyone. Not even the Crystal Maiden. Like, Crystal Maiden could just frost by and run away. Hold that thought. Moving in, the boat comes through, Ramsey's BKB, and now the fight, they fight it around the shrine here. Do they commit forward? They want the Snekropos, throwing in the Laguna, the chain front to counter, the Torrent's there as well, but it big daddy Sven in the house, forcing Yo on his heels. He runs back into that red sword of doom. Oh. And it seems it's destiny for VP to take GG. this game. One of the first times we've seen a team GG out on the main stage before losing a second lane of ranks. LGD just got blocked. I think Virtus Pro did everything correct. They want that bottom lane. Nine Posh got way too much in his lane. Of course, Alina got the ganks that she needed mid, so she won there as well. Winning every single lane, winning every single engagement. And they, want, see. and they want the VP way. They yes. want playing with incredible confidence, great mid-game teamfight execution, pushing the early advantage as much as possible. So for LGD, like biggest thing to change, it feels like got to have a stronger laning stage for them going into the next game. I think their draft was fine. It's one of those situations where you had a good game plan, you weren't able to execute it. So the LGD coach, you know, give him a slap on the back, be like, play better. Maybe you don't even need the coach's input. You can already see Yao putting his, his arm around his teammate saying, like, guys, we got this. We got to put it back together. Let's calm down. It's a best of three. Yep. We can adapt and bounce back. And this LGD team has done that. You know, one of their most recent results coming into this tournament was a 3-2 victory against LGD FY. So they know how to win a longer series. Yep. Like you mentioned, coming into the series, can Yao be that man, you know? It used to be Xiao Wei, he used to live in the shadow of Xiao Wei, but now can he step up and be the leader for his team? He's doing that right now, but let's see if the results will show it. Well, no better test for him than the one that VP have put him to. They lead the best of 3-1-0. We'll get some more analysis and break it down with the panel.
Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. We'll be back with LD and the gang in just a moment. First of all, we, t we try and understand exactly. We ran. Uh, I, I ran. Uh, my, I'm out of breath. I do apologize. But we are certainly somewhere else. We, if you have just joined us and are unfamiliar, wait, this isn't the panel. Indeed, we are not in the shadows, but we do have the Rasmus. That's an old school music joke. You're a lot out of breath. I'm really unfit. That was like a... It was quite a run. I, a r <laughs> that was you running. <laughs> that walking. was me at full pace. That was a slow, like, eh, like yeah, that a was saunter. Pace. You, you could have seen me. I was, I was like challenging Usain Bolt at that point. Yeah, we can. Maybe we'll race on the way. So I, I should probably stop talking so I can catch my breath. But I, I'm going to start with you, Misery, just mm. because you have to shed some light on this. A game that ends that quickly, that convincingly. Can you try and put into perspective as to how that happens? How does that come to be? I mean, in the draft, you were even saying that maybe LGD had some degree of an edge. Um, I think I think it just this type of lineup that you're facing with Crystal Maiden, Night Stalker, Lina, these type of heroes, they're so fast in laning phase. And if you maybe do like incorrect moves, if you sure. if you lane wrong, if you place your rods wrong, you might just end up losing in, in two minutes. And this is what kind of what happened here. And it snowballs all quickly because this is what Crystal Maiden excels at. Yeah. She has been nerfed, but her aura is still the same. So she keeps giving mana the Night Stalker. He never stops. The Night Stalker, the night is like feels like two minutes longer because he, he's never out of mana. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's just Lina pushing in waves constantly. It's it's just it's hard to deal with. So by just drafting like the CM and the Night Stalker so early, was that just kind of EP saying this is exactly what we're gonna do? What can you do to respond? Ah, uh, yeah, I was a little thrown off by the CM pick. I haven't been a huge fan of that hero, but they definitely made it work. Um, giving mm. these four positions that we see these strength melee. Four positions who have low mana pools, they really do excel a lot when they have increased mana regeneration from the CM aura. Yeah. Um, so that allows that allowed Lil to really have a great game, and he yeah. was so farmed. He had a medallion, Helm of the Dominator. He's running around with a centaur creep following him, so he was free to... A lot of times uh, when Night Stalker will cast Void on someone to slow them and catch up to them, they'll just TP out. But he would do that, and then the centaur would be right behind him in case... you know, So they couldn't TP out, so... That was, uh, that was cool to see. He was yeah. dominating. Mm. I, Smooth. I just think that this uh, Maiden actually, it's just worked this game because they were facing Lich and uh, Kunkia. I think if they would pick it again and be up against maybe a nice stalker themselves or uh, some other hero that's like to move around a lot, it yeah. would be a lot harder. We'll talk more about the Maiden and other things in just a moment, but actually we do have to check in with Kevin. want to make sure he has ample time to discuss it. It certainly isn't his Maiden voyage over at the Analyst. It is not, and I'm glad you guys brought up the Helm of the Dominator. That was a thing that I actually really enjoyed when uh, when the item first came out. I kind of theorycrafted supports using it, but lately we've been seeing cores. Items been nerfed a bit, hasn't been purchased much, um, and Lil used it very well this game. Grabbed a Centaur Conqueror, was using it to scout. The other thing that they used really well with it was comboing it with the Omni Knight in that it would be a upfront melee tanker kind of thing that could disable, and very often they would put heals on it just to guarantee damage without putting somebody on their team in danger. Really like that usage. Uh, also provides some attack speed, some HP. HP regen, all useful things uh, that you can actually use. Um, he, like Peter said, it's also very good for ensuring that you can actually gank heroes because it gives you two stuns, which guarantees that your opponent can't escape. So this big, heavy dominance across the map that Night Stalker has can be paired with an extremely fast other creep. So it's not just him that it's fast, it's also the creep itself, which combos really well together. Um, sometimes you can use it kind of like a Pokemon if you really want to. You can fight other pets, things like that. I imagine if you really needed to, he could have stolen one of his opponent's pets, maybe a Necro 3, something like that. Um, and the other cool thing is that even if it's during daytime, you've still got the Centaur that can stun for two seconds. It's still really fast and can catch up and helps your team win the game. And Solo, or sorry, Lil, excuse me, had a really good performance this game, and I love the Helm of the Dominator usage. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I mean, how often do